Welcome back, Stasis23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and before I get started, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up so I know you're enjoying the content, and it helps me out a whole bunch, so if you want to support me in any way, that's a big way to do it, and if you don't like it, thumbs down works also, and if you like knife content and you're not already, think about hitting that subscribe button. Alright, today I have for y'all a bunch of old fixed blades um, that... Uh, were given to my father-in-law to see if we wanted to maybe buy them uh, from a lady whose husband had passed away and he collected fixed blades and he had this one in there. I just thought this was quite funny. This thing, let's see if I can fit it all on screen. Look, there's my hand. Let's see, get a good size comparison. I'd seen one of these before. Uh... CRKT Pilar, for size reference. <laughs> uh, let's see, what, what's another good one? The Ontario Wrap Model 1. It makes, the, the, it's, the handle's almost the same size as the Wrap Model 1. <laughs> That's just a funny little, little uh, conversation piece, I think. But he, he had some cool, older fixed blades. Uh, I'm not a real big fixed blade guy, so I don't know a whole bunch about any of these. Um, if, if you know anything about any of these, and uh, please let me know down in the comments or if you ever owned any of these, uh, and if you happen to know what any of these are worth, I would like to know that too, because I may buy a couple of these. There's a few of them that I liked, and let's get started. First, uh, we'll go with the little ones first. First one is a little custom piece um, from a Fowler Knives. And look at that edge, boy. I don't know what steel. I'm guessing it's probably a carbon steel. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know a whole lot. I know this guy, the Fowler, out of Sand Hill, Mississippi. I know his stuff goes for a nice premium. And uh, I thought about messaging him and to see it's kind of like a little ulu or whatever you call it. Got a nice bulbous handle on it. I don't know what um, material that is. A lot of them have some corrosion on it. So uh, if I if I buy any of these, I will definitely be restoring them. It's got some sort of blasted finish on it. Talk about comfortable for a little knife. Good little skin or two. Put your finger right there. Get a nice little skin. Skinning action. It didn't come with a sheath. This is how it came. Alright, the next little bitty knife. This one did have a sheath. And I think this was an... It looks kind of like an Anza, but I don't know because it's kind of like a polish. It looks like a, the knife maker was making it and he broke his blade. And he's like, I'm going to make something out of that. Beautiful handles. And it's, it's, on this side, you can actually see where the, it, it's kind of separated. But like over here, it looks like all one piece. So very, very high quality. And I will say, even though it's funny looking, this handle is, I mean, super, super comfortable. And there you go. there's no markings on it. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe he, he made this, the guy that owned it. I don't know. But I thought it was pretty cool. Still, even though I'm not a big fixed blade guy, I still like them. Because <laughs> I like any bladed objects. Now, this one I thought was really cool. Got a little sheath. Um, it's It's got cool uh, handle. There's the Maker's Mark CS Texas. It's got like a hand rub satin on it. Some thin blade stock. This is one that I liked. If I were to buy this one, I would definitely... Uh, I like the original scales, but they're broken. I don't know what, what kind of wood that is. But as you can see, it's broken right there. So if I were to buy this, I would refinish, redo the handle. But if anybody knows who that is, let me know. Comfortable in hand, though. And a nice little sheath. Oop. I'm trying to do that off camera. Fits good in the sheath. Another one about the same size and about the same type of sheath. This is a, uh, there you go, 
that person. And as you can see, it's got another mirror polish edge. Now, either these makers are putting these mirror polish edges or the, the old man who had these did it or got it done. I don't know. Like I said, if anybody can shed any light on it, those are some pretty cool handles, well finished. And I'm guessing this is a custom fixed blade because of the, the finishing on this handle is just remarkable. And it's kind of like a caper design. Got a super pointy tip. It's got some corrosion on it as well. I don't know how it's coming out on camera. These lights, my new lights are kind of glaring off of it. But another one that's comfortable, it is a little thin in hand, but cool little knife. Next up is an old Kershaw. Got this old sheath i like the sheath i've seen this one before i don't know how old this is and you know if this is you know anything good i like the design it's got the the bird on it this one's got heavy corrosion on it i'd have to do a lot of restoration to this to get it to look good again a lot of scratches so this is a user for him i'm guessing unless he bought it like this i doubt it there this is when uh kershaw I'm guessing was made, you know, they were making most of their knives in Oregon because this looks like a, a knife you'd see made in, oh, wait a minute. It was made in Seke City, Japan, or no, wait, Japan, the Kai Japan, but I don't, I don't understand that. <laughs> I'm guessing the the company, being the companies in the U.S., uh, yeah, anybody fill me in. Cool design though. I like I like that uh, blade profile, and I like the little sheet that came. I guess came with it. Yeah, the sheet that came with it, of course, because of the what you call it. Next up is a Boker. I like this one too. Here's a sheath, nice leather sheath, and here's the knife. Very dirty. I haven't tried to do anything with these because I didn't look and see the polish on it. Whoop. Uh, I didn't try to do anything with these because, you know, not my knives. And, you know, if the lady wanted me to restore them, I could do that far. It's got like a, um, a brass, um, what is that, hilt or bolster. And like a polymer scale. This handle, anytime I love when a handle kind of slopes down like that. This thing is so comfortable, kind of like a pistol grip. And you got a nice thin grind on here. Thin blade steel. This is another one I don't know much about. I should have did the research on this one. It's a cool one. Alrighty. Okay, I got... Four from the ne this next company. He, this seemed to be one that he liked. And this the lady said this was just one of his shelves. He had numerous shelves of knives like this, and uh, this is Greco knives. I didn't. I, I did a little research on Greco. It looks like they're a high end production fixed blade company. I don't know. Maybe not. Like I said, I don't know much about fixed blades, but um, cool little design. They all have most. I mean, majority of them have this this deep uh, sandblasting on it, gray finish. Got some corrosion up there. It's thick blade stock. Now this handle might have looked nice when it was new, or maybe this is how they come. But it's real dry. I would probably put some uh, some tongue oil on it, or some linseed oil, something like that. Comfortable in hand. I think these are 1095. I don't know. I don't want to speak out of line, but lots of corrosion on this one. And the only problem with getting that corrosion off is a good chance I'll mess up, you know, the the gray finish. So choke up there if you wanted to. The sheaths, all the sheaths that actually that they have that he has for the Greco knives, they're these cheap, I don't know, these type of sheaths. This weird thing. Alrighty. This next one has a beautiful handle. 
Same funky sheath. You got this funky sheath. But look at that handle. I like this one a lot. Uh, another jug. Look how, look how thick that stock is. Another like a brass, um, what you call it, hilt. Is that what it's called, a hilt? This is something like, kind of like a fighter. Look at that. Looks like curly birch or something like that. Beautiful handle. Well done. Very, very comfortable in hand because of that thick handle like that. And that gray finish on this one as well. And even though they got a lot of oxidation on that edge, they're all pretty, still pretty sharp. I mean, that's pretty bad. I'm sure it looks like that started heavy pitting right there. It's a shame. Alrighty. No telling how long, you know, since, I don't, you know, before the guy died, how long he actually, how long has been since he actually looked at these knives. And there's another same type of sheath, another Greco, and another fighter style. Let's see, what is that? Just raw finish. These are pretty crude uh, made. Now, this one, this was definitely a fighter. This is a double edge. That edge, there's an edge down here, and that the top edge goes all the way back to here. <laughs> and I, I wasn't paying attention when I first, the, the first time I pulled this one out, and I didn't notice I was sharp. Almost got myself good. Uh, this one's really heavy. Thick, thick stock. Lots of corrosion. Once again, I'm not sure. The handle material, tons of rivets. Or whatever, pins. There you go. Definitely, if y'all know anything about these Greco knives, love to hear. Or any of these. Uh, we want to know, you know, we want to offer the lady a fair price. And we may be selling some of these. So if any of y'all are interested, email me. I could, I could talk to her. Another Greco. This one doesn't have a sheath. And this one's a little different. It's got a high polish on the, on the blade. Um, not sure what type of wood that is again, but well finished, comfortable, thick stock again. Look how thick it is at the tip. Looks like a convex edge up here in the tip area. There you go. Now this next one, I've seen one of these before. This one's cool. I like this one a lot. This is an old school case fixed blade. See if it all fit. There's a sheath. And there's a knife. I think that looks so cool. If I decide to, to buy this one, I will definitely be restoring this one. I think this thing would be beautiful. I gave it a nice polish or something or a nice hand satin. There's the markings, 1990 Case XX with the stag handle or either stag or lookalike stag bone that was given a stag finish. Now this is just a single edge. You got an edge down here and it's like a dagger grind. Super cool, big old beast. Decently comfortable because of that thicker handle. You got a palm swell in the middle right here. Double hilt right here. Really cool. Well made knife. And the sheath, it, it it's nice. It's nice and thick. It's not one that, like, you know, you're not going to really carry it in this thing because, you know, that thing would be flopping all over the place. But to store, even though it's not good to store the knives, you see why. You can see all the corrosion. It sucks that moisture out of the, the blades, the steel. And next up, we have an Anza fillet knife. Only Anza that I've ever seen really are his file knives. I don't know if this was a file, and he just made it into a uh, fillet knife. It's got good flex to it, attractive handle, got thin. 
think that would be a nice little fillet, fillet knife for all you fishermen out there. I know when I go fishing, this would be a good one. And the ends of sheath. One more fillet knife. I don't know. Let's see. I can't remember if this one has anything on it. Yeah, it has some initials right there. I don't know if that's his initials or the maker, but a nice little custom fillet knife. Got some flex in this one as well. Beautiful, beautiful scales. Look how nice that is. Beautiful finished work. All right, got a few more for all you stuck around. Got three Puma knives. I know one thing about Puma, they're extremely expensive and they usually use subpar steel. Nice sheath on this one. Nice leather sheath. Look how thick. Uh, you got a stag scales on this one. I like this one a lot. I like this uh, blade shape. Comfortable, but man, that jimping's harsh. Very harsh. The new hunter. Not the old one, the new one. Um, I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not sure. Look at all the look at the different two different swedges. How it comes up right there. That's cool looking. Thick, thick handle. All right, the next one. It's one of those multi-bladed knives, but nice, very nice sheath right here. Got all the boxes. These he kept pristine. He got the had them in the boxes. And I thought this was pretty cool. At least a cool idea. You got that same blade shape as the new hunter. This one's the hunt white hunter. Got some nice corrosion right there. Yuck. Hate corrosion. But I thought I saw this right here and I thought it was a back lock and I was like, huh? But what that is, is you pull this up like this, and it allows you to pull that blade out, and there's other blade shapes that you can slide, you can slide into here. Let's see, how do you do it? Uh, doing this behind camera, I don't want to cut myself. Well, you get the picture. It goes in there like that, and then you pull it down like that, and it, it locks it in. But I didn't get it all the way in there. Mm. Let's see. It needs to be oiled up probably because it's, it's not going in there too easily. But it goes in there, and you just pull this, and that locks it. I'll fix that off camera later. All right. The last Puma. This one has a super beautiful handle. Nice sheath as well. This one's interesting looking. Look at that. The, there it is. Olive. I'm guessing this is an olive wood. It says, are these handmade? It says handmade. I, I, don't, I don't know how much handmade is done on this. Nice olive wood, I guess, scales. Very nice. You got some patina on those pins. Uh, nice thick handle. Pretty comfortable. Right there. Not sure, you know, what what you use what you'd use this type of blade for. Um but cool nonetheless. I don't know, see what is that? I guess that's a maker's mark right there. Design I can't I can't see. Y'all could probably see that, but my eyes is too close for me. There you go, and it just says stainless Spain. Alrighty, one more left. I've seen many of these, but I always, always like them. Nice railroad spike knife. And I don't know if that's the maker right there. M, there you go, 93. Super heavy. Cool. Actually pretty comfortable for, you know, for what it is. Nice twist on there. I tried to make one of these one time. I lost patience though. Still got a few spikes. So there you go. That's uh, a whole old collection. 
Um, if you know anything, especially, let me know if you know anything about this little guy or this maker. Um, and if y'all are interested in any of these, email me. Um, and, you know, if, if uh, we don't keep them or we don't buy them, they're, they're, they're for sale. All right, guys and girls, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. And I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.